pure ignorance is what the episode starts with. There are a bunch of people crowded up in front of the Kaminarimon main headquarters, I believe, and they are basically saying that they are responsible for the poverty in the entire world, or at least the poverty going on. But the question is, how much of the poverty are they responsible for? And the answer is, they don't know. They are just angry and they need someone to direct their anger to, so they direct it at the richest company in the village, which is the Kaminarimon company. Okay, so... Denki's father seems to be a nice guy even though he slapped Denki, I don't know why he would do that and he seems like a nice guy um, but the whole ruckus which is being caused is because of Gecko who actually succeeded with his plan to actually use the civilians possibly as a distraction in order for him to carry out their final mission within the village which is to possibly steal even more now the thing is that we get some background information about Ryogi, right? But a few things don't add up, alright? So, um, the first thing that I noticed about Ryogi is obviously the red hair. Now, there are people out there who are gonna say he is probably Uzumaki. Who knows? We don't know whether it's he is Uzumaki or not. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't, but that doesn't matter at the moment because him being Uzumaki is not really gonna benefit the story in any way, alright? Karin is Uzumaki. She hasn't benefited the story in any way. If anything, she got left uh, by Sasuke, alright? So, so Ryogi's father is introduced with Gekko and apparently they are ninjas for their village, which we don't know what village it is, but it is in the snow and they go on missions, but they also do things on the side. Now, obviously, one time he returns and for some reason, this big or humongous person just follows him, right, and kills him right in front of his tent. And apparently it is one of his enemies, but what doesn't add up is, why didn't the guy just kill him when he saw him? Why did he follow the guy? Why did he follow Ryogi's father until he got to his family? Maybe he wanted to get the guy and his entire family for the job that he did when it comes to stealing, or possibly it is actually Gecko who created a plan and put the guy under a genjutsu because if you take a close look it looks like the guy is under a genjutsu and then you know Gekko got the guy to kill Ryogi's father as well as the family and left Ryogi alive because think about it how does it make sense that you get done with a mission with your friend right your friend returns to his family and then out of nowhere a person follows him and kills him and is about to kill his entire family and then you make it there on time like you wouldn't know that that your friend got followed by someone it doesn't make sense so i think gecko was behind the entire thing and he just wanted the abilities of ryogi in order to use him as his pawn right and like he said at the start of the episode you just need to manipulate people and you know focus their attention on one thing so they take whatever they are dealing with out on that certain thing all right and i think he needed ryogi to be traumatized by what happened so he can control Ryogi. I think he set up the whole thing so he can add Ryogi to the entire team and as he continuously keeps saying Ryogi is his pawn so that is what it is and I think Ryogi is actually starting to figure things out but he's in denial at the moment and I think eventually he will get there but until then I have a question now and that question is what is the point of this arc if you really think about it Whenever an arc gets exciting or shit is about to hit the fan, that's exactly when they choose to end the arc. When Sumire got discovered, that is the part that got exciting because before that we got a lot of boring episodes of them just chasing people being possessed by Sumire, right? So when it got to the exciting part, that's when the arc ended. Same with the bootleg swordsman and all the other stuff like, you know, Naruto Gaiden and, all, and Mitsuki's origin and all that kind of stuff don't count because it is part of Kishimoto's work and, you know, that stuff needed to be in there anyways. I'm talking about something original that isn't from Kishimoto's work. Um, and with this arc, if the next episode is the conclusion, then it's kind of sad because they just started an uprising and if they continued with it they could have actually done something and developed some of the other characters 
like the supporting characters give us an episode or two which focuses on the supporting characters it could be them training with each other and you know talking about their personal lives or something like that for us to understand who these characters are and what their goals are we know boruto wants to be the hokage's right hand man um we know that sarada wants to be hokage but what about all these other people why are they relevant why should we care about them and i want to know that and i hope that the filler episodes that are coming up actually explain that instead of just giving us slice of life which basically amounts to nothing a surprise for me in this episode is Shigadai actually figuring out that Ryogi is part of the white knight band I didn't think he had enough evidence because if anyone Boruto should have enough evidence with his voice sounding similar to the guy who had the ice technique and Boruto said I think that I've met you somewhere and then the guy just runs away with the ice technique think about it the voice matches their jutsu match that is enough evidence for Boruto to have figured out that this guy is from the White Knight Band but for some reason the genius Uzumaki Boruto couldn't do that. Shikadai only figured it out with one piece of detail and that is that Ryoki was new in the village and for some reason he knew about Katasuke and his lab full of experiments and all that kind of stuff so he must have been looking around in the village to figure that out. This doesn't prove Shikadai is smart, if anything it proves that Boruto is a bit stupid because Shikadai figured everything out with one piece of information and Boruto had everything laid on the plate for him. He had the height of the person he fought, he had the voice and the jutsu and for some reason he couldn't figure that out. The last part of the episode is pretty much Shikadai saying I think you are in the white knight band Ryogi says no Shikadai says well you stole that lamp and it has been recorded that that lamp is missing so you have it meaning you have stolen it you are part of the white knight band Ryogi says no fuck you white knight band for life and then he skips this episode didn't really add much on top of anything except from Ryogi's background story and why he is part of the white knight band he's just carrying it out um, his father's tasks and um, I understand the writing limitations for the writers of this show because everything including Konoha needs to be okay for the Chunin exam arc which is confirmed to happen right so they can't really do much with Konoha or the characters anyways because they need to be up to a certain standard or a certain mindset before the Chunin exam starts and I think um, that Boruto is gonna be you know get better after the Chunin exam arc is done and if they quit doing these fillers and all that kind of stuff then it's going to be good but if they keep continuing with these fillers then well a lot of people are going to lose interest and I fear that this series can actually be good but the filler episodes are just turning people off like I've had subscribers complain about them dropping Boruto because it is littered with filler and weak storylines let's stay positive here and let's say that the story is going to get better after the Chunin exam arc because after then they don't really have a lot of limitations as to what they can do with these characters all right I hope that you actually listened to what I had to say and you know hopefully agree or have something to say in the comment section down below. Um, the Dragon Ball Super episode review is still coming out because there were a lot of mistakes that shouldn't be there especially when the series is about to end. That is not acceptable, alright? And um, yeah, I have nothing more to say. Bye.